Hey everybody, welcome back. Guys, we're gonna be doing another speed versus weight profile video for you. And today we're gonna be doing it on the X1. So stay tuned. All right, guys, again, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. I don't know if you watched our Diesel X video, but we're basically gonna be doing the exact same thing with my SWAT X1. Got my chronograph set up again here. I've got the exact same arrows we used on the Diesel X. So this is a KI Hyper Arrow. This is stock 20 inch arrow. It weighs 291 grains without a field point. And then I have a 20 inch Sirius Phoenix. This one weighs 338 grains without a field point. I then have my Ranch Ferry test kit from Sirius Archery. This is the 200 to 300 grain kit. And then inside of here too, I've got a 100, a 150, uh, sorry, 100, a 125, and a 150. So the only thing I don't have as far as a point weight goes is a 175, but I can basically duplicate the total arrow weight by shooting the uh, Sirius Phoenix with a 125 versus the KI Hyper. So what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna be able to give you a speed versus weight profile for a total arrow weight as light as 391 grains and as heavy as 638 grains in 25 grain increments through the X1. And I know I'm gonna get this question and it's a really good question of why am I not weighing each individual arrow combination? The reason for that is I'm just trying to make this video go a little quicker as far as for me filming it. But what I did do is I weighed uh, each of the arrow shafts, which you guys saw, and then I weighed each of the points. So all of the serious archery uh, the Ranch Ferry Test Kit, the 200 to 300 grain points, those all weighed within plus or minus a grain of their advertised weight. I then took, you know, every 100, 125, and 150 grain field point that I had and weighed them until I found one that was also within plus or minus a grain of its advertised weight. So all of the weights that we're going to show and shoot in this video are all plus or minus one grain. 391 grains. 416 grains. 441 grains. 463 grains. 491 grains. 516 grains. 541 grains. 566 grains. 591 grains. 613 grains. 638 grains. 638 grains. All right, guys, here's all of our data in Excel. I don't know if you watched the Diesel X video, but this is a, basically the exact same Excel sheet just modified for the SWAT X1. If you didn't watch the Diesel X video, I'll go through this really quick and, and just kind of tell you guys what I did. So here in yellow, these are all of our measured values. So we've got our measured arrow weights, and then we've got our measured speeds. This is what you guys saw in the video going through the chronograph. And knowing arrow weight and speed, we were able to calculate kinetic energy and momentum. So having this, I then graphed it in Excel. And that's the black line that you're going to see here with all the dots on it. So that is our data set graph. And with that graph, we were able to place a linear best fit line over our data set. That's the orange line that you see here. So basically, just select linear best fit line. Excel is going to place a perfectly straight line on your data set as best as it can. And then it is going to give you some information along with that. So one of the things that it's going to give you is an R squared value. An R squared value, the closer it is to one, the better, um, the more linear your data set is. It's basically an indicator as to whether or not a linear best fit line is good or bad for your data set. So in our case, it's 0.9918. So it's extremely close to one, which means using a linear best fit line is a perfect application for our data set. 
with that linear best fit line, Excel will also generate an equation for you. So what you can use this equation for is basically calculating values along the linear best fit line. And this helps you calculate things, you know, kind of in between some of your measured data points. If, if we didn't have, you know, obviously we didn't have every arrow weight that there is, uh, or you can use it to extrapolate that uh, your data set beyond what it is that you actually measured. So you could continue this linear best fit line uh, beyond 638 grains. And that's what I did here. So instead of you guys having to try to use the equation, I went ahead and just made a big chart here that is every arrow weight from 391 grains all the way down to 700 grains using that linear best fit line. And with each of these, it's gonna be speed, kinetic energy and momentum and you guys will see here at the 639 mark i made it a different color i just made it gray so that's where you guys know that this is now extrapolated beyond the uh the data set that that linear best fit line is applied to uh, a couple other notes um obviously this line is really good on our data set from you know like the i don't know 430 mark all the way down to the 613 ish six probably 25-ish mark. It is right on our data set. The ends obviously are a little bit off with, uh, with what we measured versus what Excel uh, fit our line to. So I guess just know that depending on what arrow weight you guys are looking to use, um, something like a measured value, especially at the start, might be better than a calculated value. It's going to be a little, bit, a little bit off there at the ends. But throughout the middle, it's really, really good. Another thing I wanted to highlight was my SWAT X1 is three years old. Uh, it's got the same strings and cables on it. They are going to be replaced, but there's still all the original uh, strings and cables that I use to make this video. When I very first got my X1, the first four shots I put through it were through a chronograph. Two shots were with a 395 grain arrow and two shots were with a 500 grain arrow. So that 395 grain arrow right out of the box was about 388 feet per second. So it was like a 389 and a 387. Uh, the 500 grain arrow was 352. Um, so I would feel confident saying you could probably put on this whole both measured and calculated uh, data that we've got here for a SWAT X1 that doesn't have as many shots as mine or is brand new, you can probably put a five feet per second offset or five feet per second increase on all of these values. And a way to gut check that so, you know, we've got a 391 grain arrow that we measured at 384. So a little heavier arrow, uh, 388. So that's right about five feet per second. If we, uh, you know, if this was also 391, I would, it, it's probably going to be maybe just a little bit higher. But if we even go to the 500 grain mark, so we had 352 on a brand new X1. If I go to my calculated value down here, line 128. It's 347 feet per second. So again, a five feet per second difference. So that's where, just so you guys know, with a brand new X1, it's probably gonna be a little faster than, than what I did. And I think a five feet per second offset is a, is a good number based on the data that we've got here. So I hope this helps you guys. If you are a X1 shooter, or if you're looking to purchase an X1 and you don't have a chronograph, hopefully this is a good uh, tool that you guys can use if you're playing with different arrow weights, wanting to know how fast things go. I will make this a PDF and I will make a Google document that I will link down below in the description. So you guys can download this to your computer, print it off, do whatever you want with it. Um, it'll be there for you guys. So check out down below in the description for that data set. All right, guys, there you go. That is the speed versus weight profile for the Killer Instinct SWAT X1. All in all, you guys, I hope this is helpful for you guys. And if it is, do me a favor, please hit that like button down below. Also hit the subscribe button. Be sure to check out our description too. We've got links to all the products that we used here. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate the support. Have a great night. God bless. And remember, be a sportsman, make a sportsman.